Thanks. This will be a good, um, good one to follow up afterward. Anyway, what I'm saying is that uh, don't get your hopes up too much. But this guy up here, this guy right here is uh, John Kilduff. He's, he's the host of uh, Let's Paint, Exercise, and Blend Drinks TV. It's mayhem. I don't know if anyone's ever seen it in this room. But, oh, yeah, well, Jason has. So there we go. There's the one person. But it's, it's just a disaster. So I feel like that's a good setup for the presentation. We'll, we'll get going now. <laughs> So what is an income statement? I figure maybe not everyone in here are accounting buffs or whatever. I'm not either, actually, so. but we can talk about it a little bit. There's a lot of words on here. I'll try to read uh, to the best of my ability. Um, <clears throat> so it's one of the three primary financial statements used to assess a company's performance and financial position. So that's, uh, it's really important, basically. Um, and I put in bold on the next bullet here, it's a summary of how the business incurs its revenues and expenses. So that's really important for what I'm going to show you. And, um, and because this is a statement that goes out to you know, banks or whoever else it's going to, um, they're pretty finicky about how the formatting runs, which is why, this whole, why there are so many challenges to creating something like this in a power pivot type uh, environment. So, um, and I also I put this bottom thing here to this bottom bullet. It says it also shows a net profit or loss incurred over a specific accounting period, typically over a fiscal quarter or a year. So, the cool part about building this stuff in Power Pivot is that you're not really limited to that. I mean, you could, you can filter it to a certain accounting period and that kind of thing, but you can also look at a certain department or organization or whatever, whatever sort of categorization that would make sense to see what slice uh, a certain part of the business has for contribution to this income statement. So anyway, here's an income statement example. It's a very, very simple example because I needed to fit it on this screen. Um, but basically, here we have the revenue section up top and the expense se section on the bottom. That's the very basics, right? Um, I'll talk a little bit more about it is right that here. Your farm, Derek? Huh? This? Yeah, is that, is that your farm? <laughs> this is mine, yeah. This is my, yeah, this is my business. Yeah, right. income. We make $48 million just This is just last week. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, full year. Full year. 2013. Um, but yeah, so. We've got the revenue section on top, the expense section on bottom, but notice that there's some weird stuff happening there. Um, for example, there are some measures that kind of like, su like subtotals, like running totals that happen right there, right? It's kind of strange because you can't just grab the data and grab the sum of all the data. There's parts of it that it's, it's a running total and parts of it that are the sum. So that makes it a little bit funny. Um, also, there are running totals for numbers with inconsistent signs. So the, for example, this here, we have the costs. We have the net sales. You'd say 45 minus 15 is 30, but the, the running total would not calculate to that, right? So there's challenges in, in building this because you have to account for what they would like to see on the income statement, how they want to view it, versus what actually happens in the math in the background. So this is, it gets interesting in, in the DAX uh, for, for those reasons. I also had a little blurb about other challenges because each company has their own way, their own finicky way of how they want to view the, the income statement. Um, they, they may have requirements from their owners or banks or whatever. So they have to see things a specific way. Um, <clears throat> using pivot, power pivot or pivot tables in DAX can take you far, but uh, you will inevitably run into limitations, which I have run into limitations. And basically the question comes up as, well, do you want to have this functionality where we can have automated sheets and slice and dice it in tons of different ways, or do you want to have your PDF document to put out once a month that takes 10 days to build or whatever, not 10 days, but, and you know, there, there are pros and cons to doing it this way. So um, with that said, I will, I will move into Excel. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I feel like I'm booming in this room with all the speakers. And then my S's are strong. Anyway, um, <clears throat> and I like to hear the sound of my own voice, so that's, that's your guys' problem. Um, <clears throat> so for this, for this one, I, I, did, uh, I just pulled the AdventureWorks database stuff. Very interesting, right? Um, <clears throat> but it's a, it's a good example. It's really short. There's not a whole lot going on with the, account, with the accounts. Um, but anyway, what I did is this is actually the, the rolled up version of that. And the first thing that you do is, is you identify, well, these headers right here. Notice these headers aren't in any, 
any particular order. They're in the income statement order, but not in any like alphabetical order or anything like that. So the very first step I did was create this table right here that has the headers. By the way, I'm just kind of going through this sort of step by step. It'll be agonizing if I actually went through every single little detail, but um, if you guys need more explanation or if you're really, really bored, just raise your hand and tell me, okay? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Will the slides be available? Yeah, uh, the slides will be available. I think it, the whole thing is being recorded, which is unfortunate, but I mean, it's being recorded, uh, so you'll be able to have access to that, I think, right? Where'd Randy go? Oh, good. He's recording the whole thing. Okay, so. So the slides, as well as this audio, you'll be able to listen to my voice. You can turn it on when you try to go to sleep at night, whatever you want to do. Um, <clears throat> so I got the header here. I can, I can share this file too, because like I said, it's just AdventureWorks. I can share this file, and you can kind of run through how I did it. There are tons of different ways to be able to, to do this stuff. So anyway, so I have this guy. This is the most important part, the header, header deal. All I did here is just write out what the headers are. So notice I have the ones that are running totals and the ones that are normal headers. And then I just put this order over here because uh, Power Pivot allows you to sort by different columns. So I'll explain that in a second. But this is the basis of what I need, what I need to happen in my income statement. Then over here, and this is just because I chose to do it by numbers, I uh, made this calc calculation type column, which is just stating whether it's just a sum or whether it's a running total. So the ones and twos are just sums or running totals. I'll explain where that, where that uh, comes into play later. And then um, right here, I also have detail or not detail. And this has to do with that um, here, right here. For example, we, we don't really need to see that the net sales is made up of these guys. It's not really necessary to see that again, because it's already up, right up there. Um, the gross margin doesn't need to have all the revenue accounts and all the net sales accounts. It doesn't need to have all that stuff underneath it if we were to try to explode it. So this is the details deal is just a, a way to identify what should show detail and what shouldn't. And again, I'll explain where that comes into play in our DAX uh, in a little bit. So with that said, um, I built a model basically from here. So where's my ribbon? Oh god, there it is, OK. Um, I thought it was there. Come here, ribbon. Show tabs. OK, let's go to Power Pivot. So basically, I sucked in a model from an access database. I, I spruce this up in access, so it will be on my computer. I don't have SQL Server on my computer, so um, so I took it out of the AdventureWorks SQL Server and put it in here into access. But um, from access, pulled it into. I, I cleaned it a little bit and I pulled it into Power Pivot. And this is what we have for tables. So we have this fact table. This would be your GL transactions or whatever you want to call it. We can pretty much ignore all these, these guys because I'll, I'll go over them in a second. But basically in here we have a date key and we have different, different things that are recorded at the time of the transaction. So organization, department, scenario, um, account, and then we have an amount and an amount in, in US dollars. Um, I, know that, I know that Abby probably covered some of this stuff in, in, the, in the intro over there. So I don't... You know, if you want more explanation, that's, that's fine. Just ask, but I don't, I don't want to get into too much detail on it. But basically, I have the fact table that has my numbers in it, and then I have all my attribute tables over here. So this is connected to my date key, and I have a scenario table, and I have an organization table, and a department table, and then the accounts table. The accounts table is very important because that is where I assign the header, header categories that are in there, these header categories. And let me just pop in there really quick to show you what that kind of looks like. So again, I don't know how many people are familiar with general ledgers, but basically any transaction that happens in a system, such as one has to do with dollars, um, gets posted to an account in the general ledger. So what we have here are different accounts, but one of them, a really important one, would be this trade sales account. Now normally, you'd have a whole bunch of trade sales accounts based on you know different product categories and that kind of thing. In the AdventureWorks database, they only have one. <laughs> That's fine. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so we have this trade sales account, and basically uh, there's different attributes for the account. Um, some funky stuff that, that was happening with accounts that I needed to account for were the signs. Remember I was saying over here that these signs aren't necessarily 
matching like with a, with a running total. They don't actually match with what's showing in, in the amount area either in the general ledger. So there's the sign that, uh, that, that's needed for how it, how it uh, let's see how to explain this. Our sales are positive. That's how I'm going to explain this. Our sales are positive, and then all these other accounts either go against sales or, or in the same direction as sales. So basically what this sign here is just applying that, that logic, saying it's either going against or for sales. And then the report sign is, you know, once, once this account rolls up into gross sales or revenue, do I want it to show as positive or negative? So I have that report sign in here too. This has little to do with math and more to do with the display of, of what's showing on the, um, the income statement. Um, so anyway, basically what I did here is just take the account table, which is very small, and, and add it on, you know, what header do I want it to go to? Are there any subheaders I want it to go to? I also put this subheader detail thing, which is very similar to my header detail thing that I, that I did uh, in the other table. And then I have a sub, subheader two. So I have three layers of subheaders here that, that I applied to my, um, to my accounts, just so, so that's how my uh, income statement will be structured. Um, so from there. Hey Derek, a uh, quick question. Yeah. So is that coming from another table? Are you doing like a related value or? No, nope, no, this is, I actually just did all this uh, in, I, I think I did this in, in Excel, actually, because it's very small. There's only 35 accounts here. Um, but how, how the VentureWorks database is structured is that it has, like, the account and then it has a parent account. And I basically flattened that out and put it in here so I can look at this kind of a, a, normal, a normal view. I think the, the hierarchy they have in the, in the um, VentureWorks database is really great for, like, SSAS stuff. I don't know. Anyway. So I, ha I just had this, so I would see like on my left side here, I would see my header, which is like the revenue, net sales, and so on. And I would have subheaders, like gross sales, discounts, and then I'd have the subheader two, which would be the next level, okay? That's what I'm going for here. But anyway, enough about the model, because that's not really that exciting, and it's kind of confusing in, without context. So let's check out the first pivot. Ignore all the extras. We're just going to look at this for right now, not the highlighted part. I'm going to hide that. <laughs> so anyway, the first measure I did, I just brought over my headers. And the first measure I did, I just, I just did dollars, right? And I don't know the best way to show this stuff, so maybe I'll just show it this way. But basically, my first measure is very simple. It's not even needed to write explicitly, but I did. And all it's doing is summing up. Can you guys see that okay? No. Why, I think this. Oh. Can you turn the, the lights off so we can see the screen? Oh, well, now you asked me. You should have told me that a while ago. How do you turn lights off? Oh, it's not here? Who did that? That was magic. That may have been me. I don't know. I'll, I'll say it was me. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm trying to scroll, but this scroll on this little mouse here doesn't work. So. I'll say, can you guys, you guys can't see that. Okay, wonderful. Let me go. I'm going to get an auxiliary mouse here. There we go. There. So really simple. I'm just saying sum up in the fact net income table, sum up the amount USD column. So this is just grabbing the US dollars. And that's all that's showing right here. That's the first step. And then uh, the problem with that is, of course, the dollars column in, the, in there is not, not all that beautiful because it has things like this where the returns and adjustments aren't against the gross sales, but we really want it to be against the gross sales. Now, I would be working, in, in this case, I would be working with a client to say, what, what would you like to see? You know, well, they want to see their discounts and returns as negative and their gross sales as positive. So, okay. So the next part will be, well, I'm going to take the dollars and apply that sign, the report sign that I put in there. I'm going to apply that to the data. Now, this is wonderful, but um, let's close this out. So this dollars with report sign is the, first thing I, is the first thing I made. And all that is doing, and please ask, you know, please ask for clarification on these DAX measures because they will get 
gnarly, and that's my whole point of my presentation, is to show you DAX. Not really to teach you an income statement, but to show you cool DAX stuff. So this is the first one that, that uses a somewhat more advanced DAX function, SUMX. So basically what has to happen is that I have to take each one of these, the dollars here, at the account level, and apply whatever sign it is to that. So um, I can't just say multiply by the sign. It won't, it won't do that right. You have to actually sum it up at that lower level, at the account level, and then aggregate it all up from there. So the sum X formula allows you to do that. It says for every single line in the accounts table, I want you to take the dollars that are calculated, that, that first measure I made, and multiply it by the report sign in that, in that account line. Does that make any sense? Some yeses, some stop talking so fast, Eric. Yeah, okay. So that's the first thing, that's the first thing I did is I just made this, this deal. And what that did for me is that now when I zoom down here, when I expand this a little bit, I see that because all the accounts that were returns and adjustments had, an, had a negative sign for the report sign, that's what's popping right here. And the reason why all these are really, really long and horrible looking is because I have a bunch more stuff in here. So this is the last time we'll have to drill into that data anyway. So the dollars with the report sign is good. This is how we want to see it on the report for the revenue and cost of sales and that kind of stuff. Notice none of the subtotals or none of the running totals are running are good yet. But we do have to identify we have to identify how we're gonna do the math for the running totals. Because if the report sign doesn't work because we have, you know, like uh, gross sales one twenty seven and cost is forty, that should reduce gross sales, but it doesn't. Um, so we can't use the re dollars with the report sign for our running total. So we have to create another measure. And I'm doing this little bit by little bit. You can, you can actually combine a lot of these measures together, but I want to show the step-by-step -step DAX for this. So here we go. We're going to go dollars with sign. And my ribbon is gone, of course, because I got rid of it. And the dollars with sign, it looks a lot like looks a lot like the dollars with the report sign because it's, it's, a, it's the same formula actually. It's just that instead of multiplying by the report sign, I multiply by the normal sign. But the sum X DAX holds true there. Okay, so that's, that's great because now when I highlight these two guys, it actually sum up to what I would love to see as a gross margin, which is 86 million. I would like that to say 86 million right there. So the next step is how do we get it to how do we get it to add, you know, when I'm right here, how do I get it to add everything before it? So this is messing with, with context of, of, first of all, where you are in the pivot and what you would like to do in the pivot. So the only thing I can think of where I was like, well, how could I identify what's before this is that order that's in, the, that's in that headers table right here. This order tells me what's before it. So what I did is I created a measure called header order. And really all this is all this is doing is a very simple measure. Header order is the max of the order that's in the in the dim headers table. And the reason why I chose max I could have done other stuff. I could have done a pretty complicated values formula or something like that, but really I don't really care. I, I just say that when I'm in a certain position in the in the income statement, I just want to know what the uh, what the order is at that point. And since this is done at the header level, that's what shows. So this is just showing the order from this. But I had to write it in DAX in order for it to aggregate correctly. Because pivots, you know, the stuff that's in this part of the pivot is aggregating, right? So I had to write it in DAX for that. So what's cool about this is now I can say, well, if I'm at this point here for gross margin, if I pick everything that has smaller header orders than my current header order, then I can and I sum that up, that would be the running total, right? That's like just the normal idea of running total, but now we have to write it in DAX. I'm going to apologize right now for <laughs> this DAX formula because it looks a little bit gnarly, but maybe some of you like it. I don't know. So I created this running dollars with sign thing, and it looks like this. So it's a, it's a little uglier. Sorry. Oh, when I look down, it gets really loud. Um, 
it's a little uglier, but basically what I wanted to do, and we could just break this down into chunks here. So ignore all this stuff up here right now and all this stuff down here. What I wanted to do is to calculate the dollars with sine. I want that to be what I, what I calculate. Um, and I want it to be for everything that's before its current position. So the first thing I had to do is say, well, um, right now it's sitting at position for, for, oh, for gross margin, it was sitting at position four, right? So the first thing I have to do is take away the filters that say that right now I'm at four. Because if I just said anything below four and I'm filtered on four, I'm not going to get anything out of it. So the first thing I do is I say, okay, I want to first say all, all the headers. So that actually plays with the, the filter context and it just removes the headers as a filter context. And then the next thing I want to do is say, okay, well, I, I said I want to look at the entire table. And then what I want to do is filter that table down to where um, the header order that, I'm, that I want to keep are the ones that are less than my current header order. And the values function is a little funny because it means a lot of things, but um, one of the things it can do is, is grab just, um, I believe values will make a table. Is that what's going on in the background? I can't remember. Yeah, uh, yeah, it makes a table. But in this case, it's a table of one thing. I only wanted to grab the single value that it's currently sitting at, which is, which is where I had to come up with some other stuff because really depending on where you are on the pivot, you could have multiple values there. So that's where this has one filter thing came from. And with that said, I probably should change this to filters instead of values, but it doesn't really we'll work either way. Ooh, I don't like that. Forget that. We're not going to do that here because <laughs> I couldn't see what I was typing. Anyway, um, so basically this first line here just says, make sure that we're in a spot in the pivot where we only have one header. If we're at a total, like the grand total, it's not going to mean anything. So if we are at the grand total, if we're at a spot that, that has more than one, just return a blank. That's what this, this whole if statement that's wrapped around this thing is doing. So it's saying, okay, if we do have one filter, if we're in a spot where we only have one header, then I want to calculate the dollars for where the header orders are everything less than my current less than my current order. And that's what's going on here. Gnarly Dax, I apologize. It's, but. So is that the final result? Or man, there's more to come? There's more to come. Because that's only part of it, right? That's, we're just seeing the, the running dollars here. What we need to do is combine what's going on with this, which is, oh, I'm sorry, what's going on with he, this right here, which is our report sign and what's going on in our running total. We need to combine those two things so they show up in the same deal. So how do we identify that? Well, that's where, in my dim headers thing here, I have the calculation type. So I go, oh, okay, if it's a one, then it's a normal sum. If it's a two, then it's a running total. So I, again, I created a uh, measure that just, just pulls what's the header calc type, and all I did there was just grab the minimum from the header calc, or from that uh, calculation type column. So I'm not gonna show that DAX because it's the same as the other ones. But at this point then, in this formula, this combined report dollars formula, I can say, well, hey, if it's a one, pull the dollars with report sign. And if it's a two, pull um, the running dollars with sign. And I'll show you how I did that. Um, combined report dollars. Mm -hmm. So here we go. So basically I applied a switch formula the switch allows, is basically like a choose formula in Excel. Um, it's based on whatever value comes out of this, which is just ones or twos. Um, I also, uh, it's possible that a blank will come out. So I just said, hey, if a blank comes out, return a blank. If a one comes out, return the dollars with report sign. And if a two comes out, return a running dollars with sign. So that is what resulted in this right here. So now we're getting closer to what, what, what a nice income statement would look like. And this is what, you know, I chose this very simple example, and I was really happy I did because I knew that this would be an agonizing, long <laughs> thing if I didn't. So, um, so anyway, this is, this is where we're sitting right now, which is nice. It looks, it looks like what we want. Now what happens when we actually put it into an income statement where we have the detail showing? So that's what this next tab is. This, now I'm seeing the detail. Um, I'm going to, ah, I really don't want those there. I want to, I never have to do this on a normal computer, meaning hide ribbons and that kind of thing. 
And then I, oh, I want all these to be gone. I could just uncheck them, but then I'd have to find them again and remember what they were. Okay, I didn't take notes. Anyway, um, <clears throat> basically what I have here is a, oh, I know how I can do this. We'll just make a copy real quick. This will be nice. And where'd my field list go? Nope. <laughs> field list. Oh, good. Headers. We'll take all those out. And we'll take all these out. And we'll take this one out. Okay, this is fine. We can go from here. So basically, when I start looking at all of my an entire field. When I start looking at all three of my levels in my, my income statement, you get weird, like kind of ugly stuff. And, and you know, execs don't like ugly stuff, and banks don't like ugly stuff. So, you know, they, we have to fix these ugly things, right? For example, when I get down to the discounts level, um, I get this blank thing here. And this is because there's no detail for the discounts. It only goes to there and it doesn't have anything more, as opposed to the gross sales area where you have more detail showing. This goes back to when I created that uh, detail column in the header, and I also created a detail column in, in, the, um, in the subheader for subheaders. So it's just saying whether or not you want to show the detail here. So the combined report dollars, this guy right here, is what we just came off of from this, not there, not the pretty one, from way over here. The combined report dollars is where we just left off, and now that's our starting point over here. So we look here, we go, okay, well, I really, I don't want to show the details for some of these things, including like the net sales area. I just want it to roll up to be net sales. And if someone clicks on it, I don't want it to do this kind of stuff. So in a pivot table, to get that kind of stuff to go away, you just force blanks. If it's blank all the way across the pivot table, it won't show up. So that's, that's the trick. So you basically have to say, hey, if I'm in a certain area of the pivot table, or if a certain thing is happening, a certain event, I wanted to suppress that, uh, you know, in certain spots and, and otherwise show the calculation. So this combined report dollars with detail formula thing came in, comes in here. And with detail. This one is sort of tricky, but sort of not. Um, the first thing I said is like, okay, well, if the header detail, which I created a separate measure for this, which is just the min of the, the, the detail column there. Anyway, if the header detail shows a zero, meaning I don't want it to show detail, and the subheader is filtered. Okay, what does that mean? Let me pop back here. <laughs> so the first part is I'm, I'm suppressing detail that goes from the header down to the subheader, right? So that's like right here, this net sales thing. I don't want any of this stuff down here to show. And this is the, this is the subheader. That's what this area is right here. Sorry, I'm clicking around here. These three things, this is, this is all subheader, and this is header. So if the subheader is filtered, meaning right here, this, this subheader is filtered on discounts, and right here it's filtered on gross sales, and right here it's filtered on returns and adjustments. But right here, it's not filtered on anything. So that's the, the first thing to do is just identify whether or not the sub the sub uh, heading is filtered. And I think in my other deal here where I had a big mess going, this guy, that's what this is doing. And really, all this formula is is subheader filtered is just this DAX formula here that says is filtered. And you say what do you, what do you want to look? What do you want to test for what's filtered? And I, in this case, I just want to see is the subheader filtered. And what I get out of that is a bunch of trues and falses. For example, here I get all these guys which I expect to be trues because they're filtered by the subheader, which these are different subheaders. And then at the subtotals, the header subtotals, they show as false. Um, and then I also have this header detail thing, which I, I showed to you in the formula, but this is nice so you can actually see the results of it. Um, this is saying that, yeah, my stuff in my revenue area, I do want to show the detail. My stuff in my net sales area, I don't want to show the detail. So two things have to be true in this case, is that this has to show as a zero, and this has to show as true. 
in order for me to in order for me to say, okay, that's what I want to suppress. Those two things. I mean, not those two things, but when those two things happen at the same time, I want to suppress these lines. Um, so if I go back to that, to that combined report dollars with detail, you'll see this. That's what this is saying. I need those two things to happen at the same time in order for me to suppress the line. So I want the header detail to be zero, and I want the subheader to be filtered. I only have to do this because it, it returns a true false in the, in the formula anyway. So if those two things are true, then I want to return a blank. Otherwise, I want it to return the combined report dollars. So the result of that is, popping back over here, is this right here where it is, it is actually suppressing, you know, it's not showing the detail for net sales, um, but it is showing it at the, at the, at the subtotal there. So that's, that's kind of nice. And when I take, when I remove combined report dollars, all of these lines right here will just go away. And I'll show you how that works out. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do too, and this is co sort of silly, but I'll show you it in the, um, in the, this guy. They really, actually, I want to show it to you somewhere else because that's not. Here we go. What they would really like, they, meaning they, right, the execs or whoever, um, <clears throat> they would really like to not have, they really want their subtotal for revenue to say net sales. They don't want revenue total and then a net sales thing. They don't want both those lines there. They only want to see one for net sales because having the revenue total is confusing, right? <clears throat> this is just me talking as, uh, you know, a demanding executive or whatever you want to, I'm a horrible demanding executive. Anyway, <clears throat> they don't want to see that. So they don't want to see the subtotal for revenue. So the other thing I needed to do was suppress that little spot. And how do you identify that little tiny spot? Well, in the income statement dollars field, I likely built a couple more things, but um, what I ended up doing is actually a few things uh, because the next layer down from subheaders is subheaders two. And I did the same thing with the detail on subheaders too as I did with, with the headers. So what you're seeing here is actually three and statements um, combined with or statements is saying it, if any of these three and statements happen, I want to suppress the line. Um, the first one being that uh, this one here was the one I already showed you. If the header order is one, is that the one I showed you? No, I, I showed you this one, sorry. Can you zoom in a bit? Oh yeah, sorry, I made it really big but I did not zoom in. Um, but yeah, so the, the first one is here. That's the one I already showed you. If the header detail is zero and the subheader is filtered, I want it to suppress. I also added a couple other things. I said, if the subheader detail is zero, and that was something I added in the, in the account table, and the subheader two field is filtered, then I want it to suppress. And then the very last thing is if the header order is one, which is the revenue one, right? Revenue is the first thing that shows. And if um, the is subheader filtered, uh, if this guy is not filtered, meaning if we're at the total for revenue, then I want it to suppress. So really that's kind of a, a variation on a theme from the last one. It's just more complicated because there's a couple ors and ands and whatever. But all it really did for me was suppress that guy and suppress another layer down. So when I go down to discounts, I don't see anything there either. Yeah. So what does this look like uh, when I actually so in an income statement, it looks like this. And, I, and let me pop this up. Actually, let's do this. So just so you can see, um, when I expand this out, expand entire field, some of these have a plus sign on them, and some of them don't. And the ones that don't is because I forced the detail to not show. So this formatting is very nice, nice looking. Uh, it's, a, it's a good start, right? There's a lot of prettyization that has to happen after this point in order for you know, people to be happy with it. But basically the income statement dollars, is, they're showing correctly. They have the right signs on them. The running totals are showing correctly. Um, and it's basically showing how they want to see it. Now if they wanted any sort of special order to these things, that's possible. There's a lot of things you can do with this, but like I said, there's some, there are a lot of things you can't do with it too. Um, the other thing that's very common is they would you know, likely want to see a percent of net sales. Um, so I also added that here. Uh, I'll show you the, the formula for that. Mm. 
first thing is that I did was actually create a net dollars measure. Um, and I did that separately because it's sort of a, a funny play on the filters because wherever you are in the income statement, you have to remove all the filter context that's currently in the pivot, or all the pivot context that's there for the headers and subheaders. You have to remove all that and then you have to refilter onto net sales. So that's what this is doing. This is saying I want the income statement dollars, that, that last measure I just had. I want you to do it for all the accounts, meaning like all the subheader filters and all that stuff is just taken away. And then I want you to only look at the headers that are net sales. Only when the header is net sales. And basically what you get out of that is um, this 127.562 will show on every single line, every single line here. And then uh, from there you can calculate a percent of net with a very simple divide function that suppresses errors. That's what the blank's all about. But dividing the income statement dollars by the net dollars and you get your percent, percent of net. So um, I've, had, I've, I've had a client where they, they said, they, oh, I don't want to see any percent of net for anything that's above net sales. It doesn't make any sense. Or even 100% for that matter. So you can imagine with how I've already played with filter context that that's completely possible to do and just you know, say, hey, anything with a header order of two or less, I won't show the percent of net. Everything else, I'll show the percent of net. So my whole point with this is that, is that it's very, very flexible. It's a lot more flexible than what you could have done with a normal pivot table because you have DAX to play with the filter context, to override things, and, and so on. Um, so from here, I, I basically took it a step further and made a, a pretty version of it. You know? So this would be more like something that the, the, you know, the, the end user would see. Um, I also added a bunch of filters because we can filter this stuff now too. And, and um, you know, I was really just playing with the dollars and stuff before, but now you can you can add the time stuff, and I have scenario in in my um, in my database, you know, in my model, um, and then of course by department and organization, and all this stuff flies pretty quick. This is a really small data set; it's like 30,000 records. But I have clients where I do this on three million to five million records, and it it does just as well. Um, I only showed this. This is just one example, but you can easily do um, actual versus budget, um, create more, more DAX measures to look at variances and that sort of thing, or year over year. Um, but basically, the nice part is that this guy is, is taken care of. The layout of the income statement on the left side is taken care of. You can put whatever you want on, on the top and the right side and, and uh, create a report that's interactive. You can refresh easily. and. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty. Any questions? Sorry, I know a lot of it was like, like really just, but go ahead. Uh, can you give us an idea, a sense of how long it actually took you to build all that? Yeah, so I built this today. This one, this one I, I mean, I, the thing is, is I... a real client. I mean, how long does it take to go through oh, yeah. to figure out all those steps? Yeah, that, that is something, a completely different story because... From the, from a, like if you're sitting down with a real client, you know, you say, okay, let me, you know, if you want something like this in a, in a, in a power pivot model or, or something like this sort of solution, let me see your current income statement. And maybe you, you can't replace that current income statement. It has to be that way. But the tools you might make here would be uh, augmenting that uh, for analysis or something like that. Um, so the first step is just looking at that, seeing what's possible, you know. And some of that you might not know until you try it like what's possible on it. So that sort of development, eh, it could take a while to do. Um, this guy, like I said, I, I built today, but I've, this is a very simple model. There's not a whole lot going on. Um, but uh, in reality, I think I had, so for example, I had um, a client where they asked for an income statement and a balance sheet. You know, two of the, two of the three you know, major financial statements, right? I had those both up and running in a couple weeks. Um, not working full time on the on the project. Uh, that was while I had a full time job. I was just doing that on the side. So that kind of gives you a time frame. But really, it's very important to communicate with those those um, those end users, the execs, or whoever is asking for this, and make sure that you know what you're making is what they want. Also, um, that it's tying out to what what they have for for their income statements. I found out with with uh, with that same client that. Actually had so this one gets you down to net income. In their case, they wanted to go down to EBITDA. So um, 
they actually had ad backs that were not in their system. This is not really that shocking. I mean, I've <laughs> run into that before, but they had ad backs that weren't, weren't in their system. So I had to manually have a table for other ad backs that didn't exist in their transactional system and then include those. But we would have never known. Everything looked correct. You know, as far as you know, creating, the, creating the sheet, everything was coming from the system, the gross sales, the net sales, the COGS, all the way down to net income was all looking good. But the EBITDA was off, and that was, that was the reason why. So there's a lot of, the, there, there, there's a potential for a lot of development time there, um, mainly in just working out the communication. It's really important. But any other questions? Like I said, the, the, whole point of, the whole point of this is really just to use the income statement as an example because there's so many spots in the income statement where you're overriding what a normal pivot filter or what a normal pivot context would be. For example, here, if you just had a dollars column and you just drug it over, this would just add up the dollars that are associated with net sales. In this case, there's nothing associated with net sales, but because they're all buried in other, you know, this is a running subtotal. But, um, but yeah, so you have the ability to override it almost cell by cell, override the filter context and put in what you want. So, any questions about any of the DAX or, and that's just brushing the, the surface of DAX too. But, and there are probably a bunch of other ways to do what I did. But. Okay, you guys are really quiet. Lee, you have a question? Oh, okay. Jason, any questions? Can you touch on uh, the, uh, the filters piece? It's kind of interesting, not really DAX, but kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, I just, I, I do that. Because you know people want to people forget what they clicked on even though it's right on the screen. Um, sometimes it's not on the screen, I guess. But um, you know they uh, here. I'll show an example. Like see if I pick multiple organizations. So I'm using cube cube functions to do this, and I'll show you how I did that. Um, it's this page right here. It's kind of gnarly looking, but basically I laid out my I laid out my my slicers right here. Um, actually, there is stuff in here. <laughs> This is just calling the slicer uh, that's in that that's in that tab. Um, I'm going to delete this one so I don't need it anymore. This is just calling the slicer that's in that tab, so I have it as a reference, so I don't have to write slicer underscore scenario for every formula I do. Um, and then I have some other stuff here. I don't actually know if I'm using all this stuff or not, but I'm using cube formulas for this. So I use cube ranked member, um, and I just pull the top one, and this is just to see if it's not filtered or if it's filtered on something. So if it says all, it's not filtered. And the reason why I did that is because, um, for example, this department here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven members in that department, but if I do a cube set, cube set count on that slicer department, I actually just get, oh, come on. <laughs> I just get one. And I, and I don't really know why that is. I think it's because it's returning all and not returning anything else, but, but that's, I just get one. So I actually have to separate you know, the all versus what the count of the, uh, of, of the filters are. And then what I typically do is I just do a top 10. And, um, and since none of these slicers had anything more than 10, I didn't worry about doing, a, doing anything else. But typically on the 11th line, I'll say more than 10 items. Um, but anyway, there I, I did cube ranked members here and just pulled. All it's doing is pulling like, hey, what's the, what's the first cube ranked member for this slicer? Um, and hey, if, it's, if we're getting bigger than this count thing, then this is for adding commas and stuff. It's really boring at this point. But anyway, <laughs> this is what I'm doing. And I basically concatenate all the text up here. And it pops up here. And no one sees that back end stuff because it's horrible to look at. But, but this is nice to look at when you're when you're filtering on stuff, and especially if this if these slicers filter other um, workbooks, other other worksheets. I mean, then you could just point the filter thing over, and everyone can see what they're filtered on. But How is this deployed in the end? Does this live on a network share, or does it live on I don't know, like SharePoint, and gets refreshed automatically? How does it end up? Oh, um, yeah, you can. I, I've actually had I've built these to where they're on SharePoint. You can you know set up the refresh automatic. I've built tabular versions of this, um, and then you just post them in SharePoint or whatever. And um, or this one is just an Excel document. I mean, I know that. Uh, other companies I've seen, they, they, just, they build all their P&Ls and stuff in Excel anyway. So, yeah. Any other questions? 